So we've got us a Mitsubishi here at this house. Everything about this kind of tells me that it's probably low on charge. Seems like I got one right there. Another one over there. You're supposed to weigh it all in, pull it all out. I'm not doing all that. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got us a Mitsubishi here at this house. I hate Mitsubishi. Their training sucked, and I've not been happy since I've taken their class, so I didn't learn a whole lot. They are one of the better units, but it's just not. I don't like working on them because I don't work on many of them. So anyhow, we got four heads on this thing. Everything about this kind of tells me that it's probably low on charge, just looking through the history and things like that. Here's the unit, I've got her open, got my leak detector ready to go. Most of the time it's because people don't do the flares right and they don't use proper flaring techniques and all that. It's got all the metering devices back here. Never's here. It's always on the inside somewhere. Behind the wall, in the attic, in the crawl space. So we've got one's going across here. Going up. This is when it's running because the metering device out here, you're mainly just dealing with low pressure. Just gonna have to go around checking all the heads. It's gonna be 410A, so we can go ahead and use my high pressure gauge. Yeah, we're running 50 pounds. Let's see what happens if we kill that. Let's see if it'll see if it'll go up there. there. We go. That'll give us a little more pressure to work with. Hopefully, we can find the leak a little easier that way. You can you can just tell because it's not coming back cold. It sounds noisy. Scan the. They got it kind of sealed up. Okay, that's good. Now well, we're gonna have to go around, look around. Seems like I got one right there, another one over there. Oh, there it is, like on the very bottom there, that's what I needed. Yeah, I just couldn't see it on the other one because oh. there was a thing right oh, underneath yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, so far, so good on this one. Uh-oh. That's not good. Bad right there, huh? Yeah, not good. But it keeps going off right there. Must be right about there. Well, they do get crack in them or something? Or? Well, they're paper thin because they want to get all their efficiency out of them, so they leak easier. If you have any uh, sulfur water or anything like that, that'll cause them to leak too, but... Well, we got a lot of iron water. Iron won't hurt nothing. Okay, it's just that sulfuric yeah, uh, the, the gas. I forget the exact science name, yeah. but it just eats into anything that's copper. Well, yeah, it hurts. Every, every yeah. appliances you have in the house. So. Pretty much. This one's an 09, so it's a small. little smaller than those 12s. All three of the others were 12s? Well, two of them were. I don't know what that one was. We'll have to look at that one again. Okay. I was hoping we'd just find a loose nut on the back of the flare fitting or something. Uh -huh. not, not coil leaking. That kind of... Kind of stinks for you yeah. and me because I don't want to have to change it. <laughs> Dirty job, huh? It ain't bad. I mean, these are smaller than the ones I had done. The ones I did was on a commercial oh, yeah. uh, unit and it was about three times the length of this. Oh, yeah, well, good. Well, at least, at least that one's not leaking. We didn't use them all winter. Well, that's, uh, what are you using for heat? Uh, we got electric baseboard heat. Ooh, boy. What's your electric bill run, though? Too much. I was going to say, this has got to be cheaper than that, ain't it? Uh, well, 
Or is yeah, it just not comfortable it, for you? We tried it the first year and there wasn't much difference. Oh, about the same and yeah. it probably felt like cold air blowing yeah, on you? it was cooler air. Yeah, they have came out with one called the Hyper Heat and that one's a lot better uh, at getting uh, the house warm at uh, lower temperatures. But oh, yeah, I don't now think this is a Hyper Heat. Me. So we're gonna go ahead and get this turned back on and we're gonna juice them up. Uh, we'll measure in while we're going. Back of this thing's kind of dirty too. There's that. Let's grab the garden hose he's got over here, which is kind of nice. Wash this thing off so that it breathes. It's kind of warm out here. So finally in the high 80s and uh, got a pretty pond. So yeah, guys, this is, this is some of the places I work at. Um, this is a little more desolate than some, but <laughs> I mean, you can see the big windmills out there. I think that power goes to over to Illinois somewhere. They ain't using it year round, as you heard. They're using their baseboard electric heat. You're supposed to weigh it all in, pull it all out. I'm not doing all that. What we'll do, uh, they claim you can't do it, but then I had one of them tell me you could do it with superheat and subcooling, actually be subcooling, but. <laughs> I'm not pulling everything out just to weigh it back in, especially when it's leaking out anyway. You're wasting a lot of extra time. You do what you want, you do what your company tells you to do. This is how I'm gonna do it because that compressor is gonna make up uh, for the speed, it'll speed up, slow down, and pretty much offset the fact that it's low on charge or whatever. That's the only nice thing about those being more intelligent. So let's grab the gauges and the, the juice bottle and pump it full of love. Well, my gauge is down to about five pounds, 10 pounds of pressure, that's not good. There's discharge right there on that one. We're gonna monitor discharge just to be happy. All right, so we've got everything bled out. We're on that discharge. We're running a 218 head on a uh, 410 system. And we are on 410. Let's go ahead and go into our menu and tell it when you want to charge. So let's go down here, refrigerant charging, go to manual charging. There's our uh, meter scale. We'll reset this thing to zero, like zero. Yep, boom, down to zero, so simple. And let's start adding slowly. Don't wanna get too stupid. It's a rotary compressor, but you know, our, our fan's not even hardly moving here. As we get closer, we'll see if we can find a liquid line in there to tap into and kind of get us a ballpark. Um, grand total pressure, grand total poundage on this was eight pounds 13 ounces and that's good for 131 foot so eight pounds 13 ounces is good for 113 foot and i about bet you 150 dollars yep i'm right they did not mark how many feet they used because that would be nice of them there we go so there's 14 ounces now you can hear the compressor just change pitch we're at 35 ounces. I need to go inside to make sure that he's actually got all of them running. We're gonna run them all at maximum cooling so that we put it under full load here. And with, hot, with as hot as the house is, it, yeah, you can hear it sounds like it's slowing down some. Let's go inside and get that done and then we'll see what we get. Taking it easy there, buddy. Huh? Keep them cool on the floor. There we go. Fan, we'll kick the fan up to. Are you on yet? Yeah, it's running out there. I'm gonna turn this one up to. Oh, you got it, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it down in temp. We're gonna crank up the fan speed and uh -huh. make them all run at maximum and then I'll. Okay. Shouldn't take too long once we get those all going. You can use that on all the reprogram? Yeah, all of them? Okay. usually anyhow. You have to reprogram them or? No, I'm just cranking up the fan speeds and turning it down to like 65 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that way I ain't messing with your location of your other thermostats. There we go, this one's already cranking, that's good. He's got this little intelligent sensor that'll follow you around the room. Oh, no, it's out here in front, yeah. I'm trying to remember, I know there's one more somewhere. Yeah, it's hiding. Yep. So you out of the... I'm out of the... Uh, I used to do a lot of residential. I don't know more. Oh, no, yeah. No, I do more commercial stuff now. So. Yeah, that's what they said. Had to get somebody 
probably off of a commercial to stop in. Yeah, we're down on people, and it's just busy. It's hot, and every, yeah. everything's breaking at once. Yeah. And but there we go. Now we're moving some air. But yeah, we'll we'll have you up and going here shortly, and then we can, like I said, we'll get you a price on fixing it. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that fan blade needs cleaned. I'll definitely calculate that in on it because that thing's dirty. Don't mind me, buddy. Go back to sleep. Take her easy. There you go. That don't look too bad. We used to have a pond just like that. I'll listen to her whistling, humming to me. Wee, 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 wee. Now we're running 400 pounds ahead. 20 degree subcooling, 37 degree evaporator. So we may only been about 47 ounces, so uh, about two and a half pounds. That ain't horrible. There, she's slowing down a little bit. That fan, it's gonna speed up to modulate the liquid temperature. So we're 114 ish now. Subcooling's gonna start adjusting down. We'll let her run for just a little bit here. What I did is I tapped onto my line right before my metering devices right here. Four electronic expansion valves. That's the liquid there. Here's your suction line coming back. Uh, theoretically, we can come over here and tap on there. Get your superheat. It's got an accumulator back here in the back. So you've got room to work. What can be a little tricky here is the fact that you add the refrigerant, the head pressure comes up, fan speeds up to counter it brings the pressure back down so yeah unless you're gonna get your uh, meter out and actually clamp onto this to find out exactly where your frequency's at I really like my 376 FC I've got two of them I uh, haven't been using this a whole lot lately got a hellacious deal on it on marketplace what this one can do is measure frequency come down here get right on your there hit the yellow button run 145 hertz so yeah these run stupid frequency wise i don't know what the max is i forget like i said that kentucky class they had sucked it was one of the worst classes i ever wasted my time on 145 on the red leg i said something to one of the other youtube guys that used to make a lot of videos and he's like come to my class and it's like well i just don't work on these that much anymore um, which is fine because I really don't like working on them because I just don't I haven't had good training. I've been city malty. I've done it all. There is the white, and it is at 145 hertz also. Current 6.7. There we go. I like that. 6.6 .6 versus 6.7. Not too bad. Now we'll see what our total amp draw for this thing is. 10.3. Ten point five, and we're right at sixty point zero hertz. Let's see what our line voltage is. See if they got much of a drop out here. Two forty-two. All right. Let's see what our incoming versus our outgoing temperature is here. Uh, it might be ninety-five only because we're coming right off that sun right there. Kind of trying to get back here. Let's just say ninety-five. Feels like we're kicking some heat pretty good. So that's about 15, so 95 and 105, 105 would be 10, 110 is five more, so it's 115, depending on where we move around. It's about 15 degree rise across the condenser. Let's go inside and see what we got going on in there. I think I'm going to make the title of this video, I Hate Mitsubishi. See how many people I get watching it. <laughs> about 81. Versus, so versus 57 or yeah, 75.7. All right, so yeah, it's that's doing good. Check the front one, then they can turn it wherever they want. Yeah, this one's taking it pretty good too. This one's getting the ketchup in the packet. It's up to 157 hertz now. We're on a little harder. I think it was 140 something earlier, huh? This thing's all over. I mean, you can do 180. I don't know what this thing can do. I tried doing a quick search. But yeah, we're 
we're doing pretty good. I'm gonna let it roll, and like I said, we're gonna yank this out, and we'll recheck it uh, total weigh-in amount when we come back, because uh, that's just gonna make it easiest to uh, get the refrigerant out of it, since it's only eight pounds. No real great way to valve it off. I guess there is, we could valve it off here. I'm not doing that. Well, that way we know exactly how much is in it. Uh, we're all about not having callbacks because if we do, we don't get paid for them. So we want to make damn sure that we get it done the first time. We get bonus money for not having them. So, you know, take good with bad. All right, guys, it's going to wrap that one up. Pretty simple, easy call. The joys of residential world. So got her going. Good to go. May not agree with the way I did it. Don't really care. That's fine. So anyhow, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs button. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.